Android has an incredibly powerful and complex resource system which can best be appreciated in the process of developing applications. In this segment we will only cover the resources that have been used by the ADT created shell application including string, bitmap, layout, and text view. First, let's look at strings. The ADT created two strings for us. The hello string is what appeared in our text view and the other one is the name of the application. We'll change both of them. First, the application name. Second, the hello text, to which we will add the bold attribute. While the resource file supports simple HTML formatting in text, the smart editor will automatically quote the tags for us. So we will make the edit in the raw XML viewer. Finally, let's create a configuration specific version of our string. I'm going to copy the existing string. Then I'll create the file by selecting the new Android XML file wizard button from the toolbar, entering the name of the file, selecting the resource configuration that it applies to, in this case, landscape orientation. This is also how one creates internationalized resources, as well as resources for different hardware variations. I'll paste in the string that I previously copied and edit it so we can see the change in the emulator. Now we see a different string when we switch from portrait to landscape views in the emulator. Remember that we can switch the orientation using the 7 and 9 keys on the number pad. Secondly, we'll take a look at our drawables. The icon that the ADT gave for our application is pretty generic. Fortunately, I have an alternate icon available in my documents. First, I'll copy that file into the application resource directory. I have to rename the file because the tools will not accept a file with capital letters. I'll next tell Eclipse to refresh so I can see the new icon in the resource folder and then make the change in the manifest to make it show up in the application. I'll install and launch the application and we can see that the launcher reflects the new icon. Finally, let's make a small change to the layout. Android comes with a built-in layout editor that does a good job of rendering the layout, although you can see it does not understand the HTML formatted string. The text layout sits inside of a full screen linear layout, and we can set the gravity on the linear layout to tell it to center our text view. As you can see from the red box, our text view takes up the full width of the screen. We can make the linear layout center our text view as well by selecting layout width wrap content. The red outline now shows that our text view fits the size of our text. And here's the result in the emulator. This is not necessarily the ideal way of centering a text view. <laughs> Let's add some text to increase the length of our string. Thanks to our use of the bold tag, the editor gets confused and will not display the full string. The text is now no longer centered horizontally. We'll center the text another way, using the gravity parameter. Let's first tell the root linear layout to not center our view horizontally. Then we'll make the text view take up the full width of the screen with fill parent. Finally, we'll set the gravity in the text view to center horizontal. And the preview in the editor once again shows centered text. We'll launch the emulator and we see a similar view. Note that we do see the full text string in the emulator. Binding to Java. Finally, we'll quickly cover how the manifest and resources tie into our Java code. The manifest is responsible for declaring all of our application activities. If an activity exists in Java code but is not declared in the manifest, the system cannot invoke it. The ADK resource tools automatically generate a series of Java classes within an R class that contain static final integers to identify each resource. We reference this class in order to use resources within our application. You may have noticed a gen directory in the Eclipse project. This is where the ADT puts the generated R resource ID class file. <laughs> Don't check this file into your version control system. The class file contains an integer ID for each resource we've declared. Note that there is only a single ID to represent the hello string, even though it has been declared in two different files for different orientations. 
In our Java code, to reference one of these resources, all we have to do is use the R class. Inside of the onCreate method of the Hello class, we use the R class to set the content view to our main layout, which itself references our string resource. Let's add an alert dialog to show how we reference a string resource in code. We first create an instance of the alert dialog.builder class, which requires a context, so we pass in our activity, since activities are derived from context. Then we create a string to display. Note that we have to use getString in order to display the string value. If we just output the r.string.appName value, we'll display the integer ID of the string. Here's what our alert looks like in the emulator, displaying both the value and the ID of our application name string. We hit the back button to dismiss our alert. Looking to advance your career by acquiring new skills? Tired of expensive off-site training programs? Wish you could learn from the best instructors in the industry? Look no further than Live Lessons, self-paced personal video instruction by the world's leading technology publishers. Each Live Lesson comes with a DVD featuring three to four hours of instructor-led classroom training, sample program code that allows you to work along with your personal instructor, and an example-rich study guide. Live lessons allow you to watch the entire course from start to finish or navigate directly to any of the individual lessons. You'll literally watch over the shoulder of your instructor as he shows you how to build state-of-the-art applications. Live lessons, the power of the world's leading technology experts at your fingertips. To learn more, visit MyLiveLessons.com today.